Hello, beautiful friends. I just got home like five minutes ago. It was a long drive from Mount Shasta, but made it. And so here we are expanding into more every day. And what we are expanding into more is harmony so that we all become harmonious vibrations in this world. And so what is this all about? It's always a good question to ask. Yesterday, we had amazing, amazing guests. And I'm so grateful also to all of you who donated because Alex, she normally just teaches these workshops. So normally, she this, is, this was a workshop that she teaches. And when I first met Divine Mother, I went to Alex because um, when I met Alex, I knew very little about her, but she told me she was a miracle healer. <laughs> and I thought, would a miracle healer maybe know Divine Mother? I want to meet someone who met her too, because, you know, it was pretty unusual for me and I didn't really know what to do with it all. And so then um, Alex was able to, you know, share what she knew. And I was just so blown away. And yesterday she, I was blown away when she men mentioned the Hamsa. <laughs> She mentioned the Hamsa breath. I've been thinking about it ever since because that's something that Yogananda gave to us. And so I want to say how wonderful it is when many of us come together to share all the beautiful experiences we've had with the divine. And then together we make sense of it. And then we can be better versions of our own being. We can be inspired. To me, it's inspiring. So I personally, I participate in everything that Alex does, because to me, you know, she holds such divine experience. And that was the experience of Sri Kaleshwar. And so why is it so important? You know, how amazing it is for her to live with Sri Kaleshwar in his temple in India for five years. You know, they had to meditate all night long, all day long. They were just doing chanting meditation. It's very, very purifying, of course. <laughs> and my dogs are confused because we just arrived and so they wanted to snuggle. <laughs> And so I want to say, you know, to me, you know, just the fact that she was able to be called by Kaleshvar to her because he called her internally, you know, it's an internal thing. And so he chose her, like he chose all his students to be master students. And of course, sometimes of course, people still have free will. Uh, I know from Yogananda, you know, he chose a bunch of people to come and be his disciples. And he could see everyone's soul. He knew their possibilities. He knew the timelines. He knew what these souls might choose to do. And he knew when they were kind of on a path that might not lead to greatness. And so he was trying to guide people to be on a path, path of greatness. But he was very sad when someone decided to kind of go astray. And so what is so amazing is that Sri Galishwar chose Alks. And many other, like she said, you know, there are about a thousand students that he had who really were trained in miracle, not just miracle healing, but in this divine knowledge. And so when you go to Alex's website that someone can put here in the chat, you can find amazing workshops that she does. I did all her life workshops. She's going to be doing um, the Shiva uh, Rathri process as well in February. I also signed up for that. And I also order stuff from her. She's got those beautiful yantras. And I just right today, I received my Jesus yantra. And so these are on copper. Copper is really amazing. My guides always ask me to get everything out of copper. So I had to buy like a bunch of raw copper. <laughs> and so this yantra that I got, the Jesus Christ yantra, um, you can see it on her website. When you hang it in your home, it will provide blessings and spiritual upliftment and protection. You can have it on your altar as your divine power conduit to bless your home. You can also hold it when you give healings or when you teach others, which is what I'm doing right now. It will enhance your energy and your capacity hugely. And you can hold the yantra also when you meditate for self-healing. And also, um, you can lay it on people if you do hands-on healing for healing. So it's amazing. Very, very powerful. And so when she mentioned, you know, the Hamsa breath, <laughs> and she also said something that I haven't heard her say before. 
and that is that Sri Kalashwar came to continue the work of Yogananda. And so once again, you know, I mentioned before that Yogananda told me that one day mm, the big teacher will be Sanat Kumara, one of the holy Kumaras. And I know Alex really didn't talk about it yesterday, but she did mention that Sri Kalashmar was one of the rishis, one of the Kumaras. Yantra is a sacred drawing and the ones from mm, Alex, she, I don't know if she makes them, but they are made in copper. And I'm just holding it for the first time right now. I quickly unpacked the package. So that's amazing. And so this gave, gave me so much confidence, like hearing Alex and the big story about Kalashvar and Divine Mother, you know, how he comes to us, he teaches us, and we can have many different teachers in the ethers, but they find us. Yeah, you know, uh, let me, I, I'll definitely will take a picture of it. I just arrived, so I haven't managed to take a picture of it, but it is on her website when you go to her shop. Uh, it's copper. Mm -hmm. and it's amazing so I like to have these sacred objects you know to empower especially the work that we do uh, so that we are always I call it in the high under the highest possible umbrella so the best umbrella of energy possible and so mm, yeah it's on her website so I've got the Jesus one and I also got the mala I don't know if she still sells the mala the necklace that was blessed directly by um by Kalishwar I thought that's so amazing because obviously, you know, she lived with him for five years. So she has some objects. And yesterday, if you have not seen the call, I'm going to upload it to YouTube. Uh, I'm going to keep it private because it was a private workshop just for us, really, you know, but I'll keep it private for our group, for all of Green Tara. And so you can share it. Absolutely. Feel free to share it. I just don't want to post it publicly so that people can also do her workshops also. And of course, support her work. And so... <clears throat> Again, if someone can post the website again, if you don't mind, I'm feeling the energy of the Yantra. Oh my gosh, it's so strong, so strong. I'll email everything to everyone uh, uh, and I'll get to it either today or tomorrow. So <clears throat> we are working on the beautiful event with Patricia, which will be on Sunday, February 5th. Mm, it will be at 11 a.m. Pacific. And um, the really call that we have within us is to once again bring through the energy of divine mother alex mentioned yesterday you know that there is a big difference between actually meeting divine mother in the physical and then kind of having an etheric experience of divine mother where it seems like kind of an internal thing and that it was very rare of course because sri kalishwar could call her now the thing was to me that everything about kalishwar was until 2012 because he left his body at the age of 39 she said when uh, in the year 2012 and so things have changed since 2012 as you know and so to me they have changed so much that i wonder what his teachings would be today because he you know, comes in the ethers and he delivers amazing, amazing teachings. I receive incredible things from him. And when I receive something from him, I then call Alex and schedule a call with her and I tell her what I received. And then she digs through all the libraries she has and she said, let me show you this. This is exactly what he told us, you know, I don't know when, but so he keeps teaching. It's amazing. I know what he's doing right now. He's teaching us amazing things. So the last lesson I received from him was really a few weeks ago. It was on January 8th and he came in the middle of the night and I was learning about how humanity is now expanding and expanding and expanding to one thing and that is cosmic consciousness. And so this is really important, as you know, all, all the paths that we follow here is the path of Yogananda, the path of Babaji, the path of Christ, the path of Divine Mother, really, ultimately, and also what Sri Kalishwar shares. I, I, I can only share what he shared with me personally, the rest I don't know, but I know that he told me we are expanding into more, more cosmic consciousness. So... Alex talk about Divine Mother being very angry when they met her. And I thought about it and I saw your comments in the chat as well. So I met Divine Mother in 2017. That's when she appeared to me. And then she appeared in all those forms, you know, like she also, Alex mentioned, the Green Tara came next, Pallas Athena came next. And for me, it has always been the mother who is the dichotomy too. So in the 33 codes, you can read about the dichotomies of Divine Mother. And I always mention them. 
So the dichotomy is that, yes, there is this beautiful, amazing, you know, divine mother who is this gorgeous Adi Shakti, but she can also be many other things because that's what she can be. But at the same time, she also has the dichotomies. And she always explained to us that she is a mirror of us and that all of creation is created through her body, through her five elements. So if I am, for example, all day just feeling not really good and I'm kind of indulging in my not feeling good, what I'm doing all day, I am taking the milk of the mother, which is the five elements, which is the elemental substance, and I'm creating all day long something that is not good because we all are conduits for the mother's energy and she runs through us whether she wants it or not and so every single one of us is constantly in this relationship of creation with her now how we use the energy is unfortunately up to us as you can imagine how many people live in complete unconsciousness constantly taking life force of the mother and she has to mirror that distortion back to us now, this is when we have these distorted vibrations within us. They have to be reflected to us personally, but also collectively. And so Divine Mother does get actually, I've never experienced her angry, but I have experienced her really, and I mentioned that before, in deep pain. And her pain that ran through me was the pain she holds within her body because of what happened to the earth, because of what's happening to nature, because of what's happening to the five elements in this world, but also because of what's happening to the animals and children. She has a huge heart for all of us, but she does have little favorites. And her favorites in what I've experienced are children. Because she says, I'm sending you saints from the future. I'm sending you saints from higher dimensions. They need to be treated like saints, not like, you know, it's my kid. Here's your TV, you know, here's your iPad and sit here all day and don't bother me. Because many kids do get treated that way. And some kids and many kids, as you know, as well, get mistreated in this world. To her is the absolute misunderstanding of the gift that children bring. Same with animals. She explained this to me. I used to love eating fish. I was like a fish eater. <laughs> I ate fish three times a day if I could, you know, living in Cyprus, fresh fish, beautiful restaurants on the beach in Portugal. And then one day it was like, Adi, do you really need to? And I always say, it's nothing like you must, you must not, you have to, you don't have to, none of that, none of that. It's always like an invitation. Do you really have to? Hmm? And so then you make a decision and she does often come this way. You know, if you want to make some changes in your life, it never is like you must. It's always like, what do you think about this? How would that feel for you? Would do you think you're capable of a little change maybe here and there? And so, you know, that's the mother. But I did experience her immense pain that is specifically in this world related to nature, of course, as you can imagine. But also, there is one thing I wanted to talk about today, which is really interesting to me. And I know I talked about it before, but that's what's happening in my world right now when I go into the ethers. So our body originally was not exactly the body that we have right now. Divine Mother took me on a very long journey <laughs> to a point I cannot tell you when, but it was before we even had the body that we have now. We were completely rainbow body elementals. So we did have beautiful tall forms. We were just rainbow lights swirling. We were of elemental queendom. And at the same time, we also were human beings. So I think often about Helena Blavatsky and Rudolf Steiner, how they describe the different you know, worlds that we have, the different civilizations, the different races, really. And so this was one of those races when we were so much more etheric. And I saw us living in this bountiful, beautiful Mother Earth, so connected to her fire angel. That's exactly what it was. And everything was just magical. We didn't even have these like dense bodies. We didn't have even what you would call skin. Our skin was light. 
And I think there is something in the Bible about it too. I'm not sure, but it, to me, just, I think that there is, you know, this event happened <clears throat> when suddenly, instead of having this light etheric boundary, which we would call skin, suddenly we took on this human skin and it didn't happen instantaneously, actually, as you can imagine. So I remember she showed me this beautiful place. And to me, I was like, whoa, I'm in the Garden of Eden. I'm looking at these beautiful rainbow beings. And that's us, humanity. We are so beautiful. We just love life. And it was really a really long time ago. And then I saw these other beings coming. And this I have two stories about the end of Mu. But this is just one of them. And it's quite different from the other one. Because the second one where I see these other beings coming from space or wherever they came from, we already had skin. And so this is before we had skin. Mm -hmm. Transparent light, that's right, with a human form. And so this was the first, I guess, experience that I remember of being in a human body without it being really a body. So the light was running through us. There was no such thing as digestion. There was no such thing as reproduction. Everything was just light creation, rainbow light. And then I saw how some other civilization came from actually not here, not of the earth. And they came and we were so innocent and they wanted to experience the creation of the earth. They wanted to experience the bounty. They wanted to experience the taste and touch. To them, it was very much about taste and touch. They wanted to use senses in this world. Now, to this point, humanity used senses as an amazing way of honoring the earth to really relate to her in this beautiful, innocent, sensual touch and smell and kind of even taste. I always say we could eat etheric fruit. And so we didn't know anything about misuse of anything our senses were a gift and we use them as a gift to relate to mother nature to be able to touch her smell her feel her and so on and so on it was amazing and then these other beings they came and they were absolutely is a word nefarious a good word for that very unethical beings very manipulative beings and they came to planet earth Thank you. And they started to, they saw how wonderful we are. And they saw that we have this amazing system where we can perceive nature in such a beautiful way. And so they asked if they could, you know, and this was a manipulation, if they could just merge with us for a little bit and to be able to be one with us. And they would come into our etheric bodies, our actual elemental bodies, and they would then be able to perceive nature the way that we do. And we said yes, because we were, you know, innocent beings of light. And so I saw this. Divine Mother showed me all of this, and I felt it was really important as we go through, through this ascension process. So these beings merged, every single one of them merged with trusting. Thank you. They merged with the elemental bodies that we were the elementals that we were. We were elementals in a way, but human elementals, really. And so these nefarious beings merged and they kind of, you know, um, became one with us and they promised they would just, you know, stay in for a little bit, see what it's like to be in a, this beautiful human rainbow body. They would walk around very similar to the Avatar movie one. Absolutely. And Divine Mother told me that um, Avatar movie one is actually about Mu. And she said that is Earth. That is what happened to Earth. And so I saw how these beings merged with us. And then, of course, when you come with unconsciousness and you get touch, you get taste, you know, and you get obsessed by it because it's you don't use it as a way of honoring, but you use it suddenly as what you could say very addictive uh, sensation. And I saw how eventually these beings got stuck in these beautiful elemental bodies and they did not want to leave because they became attached. And to me, what I saw, this is when attachment was created. This is how far it goes. This is how old it is. And so suddenly this fragment, you call them fragmented beings, got stuck in these elementals. 
but the elementals could not shake them off. They could not get rid of them. They could not get them out. Because now this other energy, the fragmented energy, created attachment to form, attachment to matter. Now, if you have noticed all that we are doing right now, we are reversing the attachment to matter so that we actually liberate our being, so that we realize who we are. To me, this is mind-blowing, you know, maybe millions, maybe even billions of years. I don't know. And I know you guys will help me. Janet, I know you will help me <laughs> to figure this out. So now we've been always driven by this fragmented piece within us and the elemental being the elemental human was trying to figure out how to get rid of the fragment because you know energy has to resolve itself you cannot just kill something you have to resolve it you have to come back to love and so the elemental body beings the original humanity decided to actually start aging and to start dying, which is something they didn't have to do before because they wanted to get rid of this fragment. But because this fragmented unconsciousness was so attached, it was attached to the senses, it was attached to matter. It had to come back again and again and again to actually resolve the energy, which we call karma, which we call attachment, which we call the mess. And so to me, this is what I saw. It actually was the first time we got stuck. And it was the first time the body had to be a tool of aging and dying instead of simply thriving. And so to me, that explained, you know, that was one of the first things that Divine Mother actually showed me. And so today, what's happening in this ascension process, we are bringing spirit, which is the rainbow light, to into matter which now is a very different type of matter than we used to have because we have actually fell dimensionally into more and more density and so today we are here in this density our bodies are not what they used to be but they want to change back into freedom and so in a way you can think of the ascension process also as the liberation of matter back into spirit and to take the body with you which means liberating the body from unconsciousness that's why our DNA is changing. That's why we're being purified on the physical level, which also has to mean our emotional and our mental body, but also the library that we have around us, which is our etheric body. And so to me, this is the full circle. This is a liberation, actually, of the elemental substance that we are, as much as it is of the soul, <laughs> as much as it is of really you know, the DNA, the cells, all of it, and mother nature. And so the only way to do it, number one, of course, is that we are healing our relationship with matter so that we realize what matter is, what it isn't, so that we are fully liberated in our divine state, which also means that we liberate the body. So we are liberating also the body to be lighter and lighter and lighter so that we can go back to that beautiful rainbow form that we used to be. And so it is. And so today, it's such an amazingly auspicious day to be doing this liberation together. And we are doing it with the seven holy Kumaras, with the seven holy Kumaras that are embodied in the Big Dipper. And also today is the best day, I think, to see once again the green comet. And you can see the green comet between the Big Dipper and the Small Dipper. And so again, look tonight. They say after seven o'clock, we were using our space, I call them space goggles, night vision goggles. Sorry, I'm gone. <laughs> Couldn't find it yesterday. <laughs> Did anyone see it, the green comment? We have like high resolution night vision goggles, military grade, but still couldn't see it. Yeah, maybe tonight, maybe tonight. But uh, again, before you go to bed tonight, definitely, you know, create your bed as a temple, create kind of like a pyramid shape above the bed. That's what I do. 
spray some essential oils, the ones from Patricia. Uh, I bought so many now that it's going to be the last time that they had it created by the alchemist that they had. And so ask for this energy that is in the sky to work through you fully and completely. And as you know, Divine Mother told us a few days ago, this is like, I don't know, five days ago, that the next step will be cleaning up, just cleaning up. And I now know why, because this comet, as you know, is breaking up all that stuff that needs to be cleaned up. And so as it breaks up, the energy will then clean it up. So it's going to be amazing. So, so, so excited that we get to do this. Hmm. Um, with the world changes, you know, the divine plan I saw changes almost every day, really depending on how many people come into coherence and how many don't. And so think of yourself as a tiny little cell that when you come into coherence, you create amazing resonance around you. And the more of us, the better. And that's the purpose of our event on Sunday with Patricia and Haruko. It is so that we all come into coherence, beautiful coherence, all in love. And as always, we are always choosing love. And so today we call upon the seven holy Kumaras. We connect with each and every star of these and when you deeply connect with them you also notice that they have different colors and so also we want to support the physical body to be able to make the shift of the ages and to go more and more and more into lightness and light the sunday program will be recorded yes we'll do it on youtube actually <laughs> and it's always about correcting our course right we don't have to be perfect every day but we know how to self-correct and that's important and I have to say, I'm holding this Jesus Yantra here in my hand and whoa, 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 <laughs> amazing. This is like instantaneous enlightenment. That's what it feels like. <laughs> so I'll radiate all of that to you as it is in the instructions to do that. So beautiful. <clears throat> I love it when you, you know, Lorraine, um, it's amazing when we start remembering these parallel lives and you experience yourself and sometimes we have to collapse these different realities so that we choose different timelines it's incredible yeah beautiful and so here we are we will be using Orin uh, we will be doing everyday service to uh, our own lives, but also, you know, we are responsible for a lot of life force. <laughs> and so then we'll be blazing it every day, every single day. Sunday will be 11 a.m. Hmm, Lynn, I want to know, maybe you can text me. I'm really curious. Ah, beautiful, beautiful. And so here we go. This is such an honor. You know, this is so expanding. Oh my gosh, this, this, this Jesus Christ Yantra in my hands. I'm blown away. Okay. <laughs> and so this is from the album that we worked with before. And let me see, I have it here. This is the one. Once again, calling in the great ones. So I have so many <laughs> albums from Orin. And because I play a song at the beginning, then I lose the Orin albums. <clears throat> so, and we're going to be doing track number 27 actually oh sorry 27 it's 27 minutes it's track number uh, 12 and it's going to be transmitting divine will and so here we go transmitting divine will amazing work and we heard those words we are liberating matter we are bringing spirit into matter. Divine Mother always told me this process of ascension is actually about spiritualizing matter. And matter, she said, there's nothing wrong with it. <laughs> it's a beautiful piece of art. She always said, she said, it's your statue. It's your painting. You guys created it. You are here, creator beings. You are creating such a beautiful piece of art. That is your life. That is all the things you make and do and say all the beautiful experiences that is here in this matter and she said there's nothing wrong with it at all 
The only thing is that we had a fragment within us and the fragment became so one with us as if it was us. But that fragment is being released more and more and more and more so that we are fully liberated, which means it's okay to play in the sand <laughs> without those attachments though. And so, you know, this is the big mystery that we are unveiling here together. Also, you know, uh, Divine Mother, when she shares with me stuff, this is all past 2017. So it's pretty fresh. And so th certain things maybe are not valid anymore. And so that's why she doesn't come as a super angry, you know, kind of demon. She comes more as really this amazing mother Moo. I call her Mamu very often because she always reveals her cosmic nature and she is guiding us and she wants us to fall in love with life again. <laughs> yeah and I found this beautiful big sculpture I have here Santa Rosa and so I, I worship Mamu and so you know that's one way of doing it and so yeah she experiences pain of nature that's how I know her but she's inviting all of us and say fall in love with me once again fall in love with me meaning goddess life in all of nature and so that is the path of the mother here um what is unfolding here on planet Earth, of course, is we have to remember the big picture. I always like to start with the big picture. The big picture to me, and we'll close in about five minutes just so I, I don't... Uh, this to me is the big picture. This is the biggest picture I have seen. And the center of cosmos is illumination. And that you can call the cosmic I am, you can call it the cosmic divine self, you can call it, you know, all that is, and we are part of it. And every single one of us is within that system, because we, we are the little cells within cosmos, and we all are stars. And I know Oren says it too, we all are stars, and I know I've seen you all. <laughs> and everyone is shining to their highest capacity but we all have a potential to shine more and more and more and more and more. And so the path here is very simple. We are becoming more and more and more capable of shining the light of spirit, even through matter. This is not a prison. I know people say it is, but <laughs> this is an amazing opportunity to create. And I'll close with a little joke, which I have told before, Divine Mother appreciates every single act of creation on our side. To her, it doesn't matter how little something is when we create it. When someone invents even a button, she rejoices. That's how she is. She likes when we use our creative talent. And I know one time she told me, which was very specific, she was like, oh, I love it that humans can be so created. Even when they created a fork, I was so excited. <laughs> and I thought it was super sweet. So even a little bit of creativity, which means cooking, singing, dancing, playing, laughing, smiling with her, riding horses. I don't know, maybe. <laughs> as long as the horses enjoy it, that's always the question. I hope they do. But definitely interacting with all life, that is. Mm -hmm. And so thank you so much. Tomorrow, what is tomorrow? Tomorrow is Friday here. And so I thought since we've had all these 5 p.m. calls, I'll switch it up and we'll just do 11 a.m. call and we'll catch up with the same thing we did today. So thank you so much and many blessings to everyone.